team yet. On the final, final three for King of Death. Core game, at least. So, I think what I'm gonna do, I finally found like some card art for him and also like the art for him in the book. Something in black ish cloak with the underside lit up. So, let's do, let's see. Let's do a little bit of airbrushing to start off. So yeah. Not gonna be a lot of talking. Probably. I'll talk a little bit through my mask, I guess. Yeah, we'll see how it goes. I'm just gonna do base coats with the airbrush today because I'm lazy. Exactly. Yeah, well, Anna's is here too, but she's lurking, so. Nice. What uh what molds are you filling up? Very good. Okay. I'll just do ASMR. There you go. That's just for you, my friend. Before I forget, turn on the air purifier. Nice. Uh, this is just pure black right now. Uh, I just want to start from pure black and then we'll, we'll get some color in there though. this week on my like, data engineering so I've had a lot of time to just kind of assemble models so I put some together for when I wrap up come into so we can take a look at those at some point. Oops, I think the expert is off too. It really looks better when it's on.
put it back. Uh, I'm gonna do like a yellowy, I'm gonna do the same kind of glow I've been doing on all my figures so far. So I've been using these two colors for the lanterns, and so I'll be using those here as well. Let's see how it goes. And then the, uh, these little things are gonna go for blue, like a light blue, purple kind of video.
that's a good starting place, maybe. Let's just use a little bit more. Okay. I got this light. Okay, speaking of the glue, see that. Everybody in Central City. Hey, buddy.
if there's enough hairbrushing for the minute. So we'll see it clean up a little bit before you take out the mess. Look a little bit more interesting. Um, so how do we want to do that? To me, the the lazy, easy way to highlight uh, black, in my experience, is mis mix in a little bit of skin tone, or like a sunny skin tone, into it, and get nicer, warmer grays. Uh, I'm debating if I want to switch to more like an artist black though. So mixing up uh, Prussian blue and like a sienna. Maybe kind of like that chromatic one. Yeah, I mean, I sometimes I'll use synthetic brushes to do like my base coats, but I don't know. They often don't feel as good and I don't feel like I have as much control and like still feel like it's important to have control over the base coat part. I usually save like old synth, old uh, sables and stuff for that. So like this is an old sable that I just kind of use for whatever now. Like it lost its, it mostly lost its point. Although it still has a pretty decent point actually. I don't know why I retired this one. Oh well. So just a bougie person. I like the bougie things. Mm, I thought I should just base coat with this color with the airbrush, but here we are. 
This is where I use uh, synthetics because they're huge. Oops, not you. This one. Hey, you says wizard, how are you doing? We're having a chill, short, probably paint session, because I have to wake up early so Sorry, streaming late. That's good to hear. I'm, I'm doing good. Well, you just went to uh, LVO, right? How was that? I saw some posts from you on the, the socials. Yeah, I, I have, like, some stables will last me forever, and then other times I'm just, like, I'm a jerk to them, and they don't last very long. Um, like, it, it's generally my fault when my stable dies, so. I should be able to take off the nest soonish. Nice. Did you do any, like, I'm not, so LVO is mostly Warhammer, right? I, I, I mean, yes it is, because that's where all the announcements and stuff came from. Um, so was it mostly, like, gaming, or was there, like, painting classes, or what, what was what was going on at LVO? All I know is that a bunch of models got announced that were not for me, but they look cool. Team AOS and uh, 40k stuff that got announced as well. None of the AOS stuff was my cup of tea. And 40k and Kill Team are not my cup of tea. Finally! Here. Here, we can take, we can take a look at some of the stuff I put together uh, today. Since I finally freed up room on my my with my to do shelf, uh, I don't know what I, the last one was. I, oh, I, I was probably saying something like the the models that got announced were not totally for me. Um, but we put together some models today. So this is Artemis from Hera Models. She's a one twenty fourth scale model, but she's very tall. Um, she should be really cool. I have like her top half is uh, separate from her bottom half, which is why it's moving. Uh, just so hopefully it's easier to paint some things. Yeah, I, I'm very impressed with Hera stuff. I got some of their busts too, but I only put her together today from them. It's it's good stuff. Uh, I think they got uh, Cyprian Cyprian Negut Negut Negut. I think he's Czech or something like that. Um, to do the casting for them for a lot of their stuff, and he's 
we'll, we'll, we'll talk about him again in a second. Um, this is Alana the Bloody Blade, who I painted the 75 mil of. She was like my second 75 mil figure. Um, this is from Big Child Creatives. So it should be a fun bust slash, I guess, sort of redo. Um, at least for the top half. got this awesome guy from Ouroboros. I think he's uh, Kumicho from this their cyberpunk uh, bust line. And he just, I don't know, he looks really cool. The bust had a couple like little, little itty bitty slips in it, um, but they were pretty easy to clean up. Nothing like the uh, KDM bust. So, and he was also I think I got him. I got him for 50% off, so he's very cheap. <laughs> Man, I decided to treat myself and put together a Spira. This is the first Spira that I bought. This is the old dwarf miner with his little friend. And C uh, Cyprian also cast this, which is why I say we talk about him again in a second. But this, this is probably going to be. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. So the next product, once I wrap up these last three KDM minis, is going to be Huen. Um, but once I finish her, he's he's going to be he's going to be my little my little treat project project. Um, yeah, I really like Spears busts. They're a lot of fun. Yeah. Anyways, back to uh, painting. That thing we're supposed to do, right? starting to put together an Echoes of Camelot figure. Uh, there was a lot of things I needed to tweak on it. A lot of little gaps and stuff. And I was like, I don't know if I want to deal with these details right now as well for painting wise. So we'll see. Nice. Yeah, I, I I didn't realize that they actually made larger scale stuff until uh, uh, Eric Swinson mentioned it because uh, he's judging the privateer press competition at Adepticon. Um, and he said there's a large scale division. Uh, so I didn't realize they have a few busts and they have a 75 mil figure. Um, and the 75 mil figure looks pretty cool. Uh, and so do some of the busts as well. How's How's the quality on them? Also heavily considering picking up a couple of uh, the existing Monpoc figures, uh, Monster Apocalypse. Okay. Um, just because uh, one of my buddies on another Discord got some, and they look like the cast look really nice, and they look really fun to paint, and I feel like because I put I put in a buck to their their Kickstarter, but I'm, I'm thinking backing is probably a bad idea. <laughs> like actually getting something, just because it's a lot of minis. But I think if I just get a couple of them that might scratch that. I want to paint a big old monster. That's not a KDM monster, bitch. Okay. Borka. I think I know which one Nemo and Sky are. I don't know which one Borka is. Nemo of Scary, one of those is the the girl with the hat, right? <laughs> I'm trying to remember the privateer bust. Their privateer crest bust. Okay, we're gonna try mixing this in and see what we get. That's a little bit too much. The chimera. 
It's very strong. First Raphael brush that I had that didn't last me super long, but like it's it's tip is basically gone. It's kind of sad, but I'm still using it. But this is also when I was like fraying from the get go, so I think it was maybe just my first bad one. Also, that's why I'm having a hard time seeing my lights on. They're wrong. Well, no, you guys can't see. That's not good. There we go. Okay. What else is going on? Work day was pretty chill again. So that's good. I don't know. Still waiting on a lot of things to get here. My Chimera stuff is in the ether. <laughs> uh, KDM stuff is also in the ether. No label for that yet, so that's fun. Yeah, mostly excited to kind of wrap up this core game. I'm so I'm still having fun with these models. The uh yeah, two survivors, the intimacy couple that I painted the last time was like probably the least fun I've had with the core set so far, and it was still fine. It was very small and tiny details for sure. Not my favorite thing.
They had their uh, first Dark Herald update yesterday, which was an event. <laughs> The actual Dark Carol part of the update was fine, I thought. But, uh, I don't know. The poots part rubbed me the wrong way, <laughs> as usual. So, I guess talking about the painting, talk about something. Uh, I'm gonna kind of go way past what looks like black still, and then I'm probably gonna glaze over everything with the. I have this like very nice kind of dark color that I've been using for a lot of the shadows and stuff on my bases. That's another one of the instant paints called Column Gray. So, I'll either use that or I'll use like Pro Acryl's Transparent Black to kind of blend things together again. We make it a little, a little bit more black again. I want to get some obviously like value shifts and uh, a little bit more color in there, which is why we're using this odd mixture. So as like Matt pointed out earlier, we got some like kind of greens and stuff going on, which is fun. kind of messing around.
Hey, shorty. Uh, I'm not personally looking for it. If uh, useless wizard might be, I don't know. I'll probably pick up some privateer press stuff eventually. I know that they have some sort of event that they have here. Because they're here in Seattle somewhere in the part that they're on east side. I think. So, if they have an event, I will go to that. And hope we get something from there. Oh, nice. You'll have to let me know how that 75 is. It looks really cool. It's very unique. I'm not usually one that likes, like, a lot of creature kind of figures. I know that one caught my eye. Yeah, I, I won't be going to Adepticon, unfortunately. Um, I'm not. I'm not keen on the the travel right now. <laughs> I know things are getting better, but I'm gonna wait for them to be a little bit more chill before I travel again. I think. I'll go to Adepticon. I definitely want to go to Adepticon at some point. Like, that is something I would like to do. Yeah, because I, I, did, I did, like, a little trip in November, and uh, it was fun, but it was also very... Uh, stressful. <laughs> that is the easiest way to put it. Not Keen. Is Keen an Aussie thing? Yeah, I know you have to be vaxxed and masked and all that stuff, which is great. Um, but if I've learned anything is even if you're told you have to wear a mask, you might not, like a lot of my stupid neighbors. Don't wear the goddamn masks in the goddamn elevator. Even though we still have a mask mandate. I've seen, I've said Keen before. Maybe it's because I had the, the crimson brush uh, judging on in the background when I was painting uh, during one of my sessions this weekend, which I, I mentioned it before, but uh, if you've not checked that out, I highly recommend it. Uh, it is very long, but if you are interested in learning, like, okay, what do people look for when they're, like, judging things? That's a very, like, in-depth uh, view. Hey, Keegan, how are you doing? Painting, we're painting a cloaky boy. Are you guys still covered in snow and such? Yeah, yeah, you can, yeah, you can definitely post a link. Links are a okay. Yeah, she's she's very humanoid, but she's like an alien kind of thing. Um, but she's really cool and like very affordable. She's like in the thirties, I think, U.S. dollars. Was it because you didn't have an actual chair? <laughs> or you had a bad chair? Because that's something I learned very early on into the pandemic, was my, my the chair I had was uh, total garbage. <laughs> uh, cause, like, uh, it was like the Ikea 
Marcus or whatever, and it just did. It was fine for uh, like the little amounts I would sit at my desk um, when I used to go into an office. But after sitting at it all day for work, or like most of the day for work because I can stand up and such. Um, and then uh, I was trying to sit in it for like hobbying or anything, like started to cripple me. So I got a, yeah. Uh, so how I got my very nice new chair is I looked on Facebook Marketplace and Craigslist to see which offices were liquidating because there were a lot of offices that were switching to fully remote so they didn't need all their nice furniture anymore. Um, so I uh, was able to get a very nice chair for still a decent amount of money, but uh, much cheaper than buying it new. And it was basically new because it was one of like their surplus chairs that they never actually used. Oh yeah, yeah. Like, if, if you, I think buying a very nice chair is worth every penny, especially if you are someone who like sits at your desk a lot. Like, especially if like you work from home now. It, I th Like if you think about how often you use your office chair, suddenly those, uh, uh, like Armin Miller's and uh, steel case chairs, like dollar per hour is not that bad. And it's much cheaper than, I don't know, getting some sort of like injury or something from the chair crippling you or whatever. So. Yeah. Yeah, like you can definitely get like less expensive chairs that are still just as good. Riker maneuver. I just remember at the, uh, you goofed it, goofed it. How'd you goof it? Um, yeah, my, my other train of thought was, I just remember at the beginning of the, uh, uh, pandemic, uh, I, I live in like the downtown area, but you near all the big company offices and such. And, uh, Amazon had let their employees take their chairs home. Uh, so I would just see people wheeling office chairs around downtown for a few months <laughs> as people would go in to go take their stuff. And oftentimes they have like their computer monitors and such stacked on top of it. It was silly. Yeah. I mean, is there is there anyone in there to stop you? Can you just go in and just take it? Who's gonna stop you? Cheers, just sitting there, not doing anything, right? Yeah, that definitely happens a lot with the airbrushes. Like if you're using like, especially like a lighter color, you can very easily just kind of desaturate everything. Um, I was running into that a lot on that, the intimacy couple I was painting on Sunday. Um, like I, I just kept, uh, 
either I was going like way way too in a wrong saturated direction or way too desaturated and I just kept going back and forth and it was just a pain in the butt uh, it was not it was not worth but now we're having fun with monsters after after we finish this dude uh, probably well, I'm not gonna finish him tonight because I'm gonna probably log off in about half an hour uh, there's still a fair bit amount to do on him um, but if we can at least get most of the cloak done that'd be cool um, but after we do this guy in his base we'll probably do the Phoenix's base before we actually paint the Phoenix that way I can let everything kind of sit for a little bit and then I'm gonna do a very very shallow uh, resin pour on it. I will not do that on stream. Because, um, I don't know, resin pours are stressful for me. So. The reason why I'm doing like a resin pour rather than using the still water. I talked about this a little bit before. Uh, like the still water stuff I think is really good for like puddles and such. Like little indented water features. Uh, if you're not familiar with still water, it's like a single component crystalline resin thing. Uh, Vallejo or AK or MIG uh, make it. Um, but basically it just comes in a bottle, you pop it open and you pour it out. But uh, if you do really kind of large areas, I, in my experience, it ends up a little bit gummy. Like it, it, It's not like, it'll stick to things, but like dust and stuff will kind of just settle in it. Um, I don't know, it, just, it, it doesn't feel rock hard. So, but the, the two component resin that I have feels rock hard um, when you uh, use it. And I also, I think I only have a little bit left in one of my bottles, so this would be a good way to just kind of use it up. Yeah, it pulls away from, yeah, it, it shrinks a lot, um, which is annoying. And if you want to do like a deep pour with that, you can, I have done it. Um, you have to do many thin layers, otherwise it'll crack. Um, but I did that for my, uh, I also talked about this last time. Uh, so sorry for anyone who was here last time. Um, I did that on my Black Sun Haggard, the guy with the axe. It was like my, I think he was my second or third 75 mil figure. He was the first one I did a big base on. By big, I mean more than just like the base that came in it because uh, my first figure was the Duchess and I just used the base that came with it. <laughs> I'm, I, won't, I won't even be mad. It's a valid reason to unfollow. It's fine. <laughs> uh, oh, I missed that. I that. Oh yeah, I, I, I have just showed her on stream because I put her together today as well. Here she is. This this one gave me a little bit of trouble. This thing it didn't like settle in properly, so I also glued it to this cape so it would sway that way a little bit because it was sticking this way. Um, and then I think I have to fix uh, that because I always kept put, putting the head in and out, and then I was like, oh, that thing's starting to look a little weak. And then I pressed on it and then it popped off. And then I was like, oh, I found it. And then I grabbed it with my tweezers and then I went, Pwing! and now I don't know where it is. So I'm just gonna sculpt the whole thing. It'll be fine. Um, but yeah, I also, I did not glue that together. So that way I can paint the inside of the cloak a little bit easier and also get her bow. And this, I think will make it easier for me to paint her head if I want to. Um, I'm, tr I'm trying to be, a lot smarter about uh, what I glue and what I don't glue on my models. Um, for board game stuff, I'm probably just gonna always just assemble it because I mean it's board game stuff. 
but like, uh, I guess going over all these again, why not? Since there's more people here now. Um, so this guy, his hand, I only put like the, the tiniest whisper of super glue, so I'll be able to pop that out. Um, that way I can, if I want, get all the skin at once and then pop the hand off and then work on the suit. Um, yeah, the her cape was like not fitting on her base quite super well, unless I like really bent it. Um, so I'm probably gonna do, I'm gonna think about it. Um, my uh, my my project lineup is is the last three KDM minis, then Huen, and then uh, 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 I'll get to him in a second. Um, yeah, this guy this guy is super cool. Uh, and then sub assemblies. Her sword hand is not glued in yet. I just use some uh, poster putty so that way I can slide the sword out and work on it. Also need to. Uh, fix it again it's a little 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 droopy at the tip there um but everything else is glued in because there's a few uh few few gaps that are gonna need filling uh i do love big child stuff but i think of all the big manufacturers theirs usually has the most gaps um i mean the designs are always cool the resin itself is nice yeah <laughs> Uh, and then the last one. Uh, the Spirit Bus that I put together. Um, it'll probably be my project after Lynn, just to give myself like a little treat. Uh, this pickaxe is also just like a whisper of super glue, so I can pop it off. I accidentally popped it off when I was uh, drilling the holes in it. <laughs> I probably wasn't paying attention to what I was doing. Uh, and the reason for that is. Uh, I thought it might get in the way of my brush when I'm kind of working on all this stuff. Um, so I figure it might be nice to get it out of the way. And the reason why I like to have my models assembled, at least mostly, uh, with either like the dot, dots of super glue or like the poster tack is just because I like to prime it all together. I don't want to prime things in. I'll, I'll paint things in sub assemblies, but I don't want to prime things in sub assemblies. I also want to make sure that all the contact points of the pieces don't get paint on them. Um, cause I want res I want to glue resin to resin rather than like resin to paint or paint to paint. Cause if you glue paint to paint, the weakest component there is the paint. So it can just break off potentially. Um, nice. Uh, but a lot of people were talking about the scar I bust today. Uh, useless wizard also said he ordered some busts and then, uh, surety popped in and mentioned the scar I bust. Yeah. yeah, I'll have to figure out something for the the companion thing that uh, I guess Ben kind of started with his uh, or someone else started it, sorry, but uh, with his little uh, him and Lando dwarf thing. Uh, I know that Durgan's going to have a corgi sculpt at some point and they're going to have the elves, so maybe I can pick up an elf and the corgi since I almost always play elves in tabletop RPG games because I'm basic. Nice. Yeah. 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 So I, I partially assemble those thing, those miniatures that we just looked at. Um, because uh, I'm, I'm reaching the end of this project and like I, I have a couple of things already primed and assembled that look cool and fun uh, but I just wanted a few more options in case like they don't strike my fancy when I get to them uh, I like to have a few things ready to go that way I can just grab it and go uh, and the only reason is maybe because my drawer was full so the drawer that I store my minis in behind my bed I may, may have gotten full. Who's to say? No one knows. But maybe it did. And maybe I'm worried that I have Inu Kingdoms and uh, that Chimera order coming. So that's like... Uh, more minis. 
I was worried about, I don't know where I'm gonna put these. I'm gonna have to find another drawer. Borka. Is Borka the, the, the Hera, the 75 mil dude? Or did he get, or is he also a bust? Is he the one, the, the guy with the ax? If so, I didn't realize that you got bust from privateer. Okay. I don't have that much of a problem though. Like I actually count, I can't went through and counted what I have and like, It'll keep me busy for a while, but it's like I, I compare it with some other people in other discords and I'm like, oh, I'm fine. I'm, I'm okay. Because I, ha I had about like 25-ish unpainted busts and roughly that many 75 mil, maybe a little less. But I do also have the KDM drawer, which is its own thing, but that's roughly in the same ballpark. Yeah, 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 In tangential news because Anna started talking and it reminded me uh, the uh, the Hades Nendoroid is finally available for pre-order if you're not familiar with what Nendoroids are they're like what if Funko but not terrifying and terrible um, and slightly more expensive but worth it because they're much more aesthetic So if you're a fan of the game Hades, you can buy that also. Okay. working on anything fun. Feel free to share pictures like usual. Looking over the busts. Your own bus? Nice. Or the, the, the privateer bus that you got? I will say I have been good this year about not buying additional new stuff. So, I have I, I resisted the, uh, the new Mineworks figure and the new Black Crow figure. I'm so far resisting that clay project miniatures figure. <laughs> Yeah, the sunset figure that he just uh, released uh, looks a lot of fun. But I was like, I, I got, I got four Pedro figures now, so I was like, that's that's enough uh, to keep me busy because I got the uh, two cowboy ones and the ones that I got a little while ago, the uh, dark elf and offline. I think that's what it's called. I was debating putting some of those together today too. I may still do that.
Yeah, I, re I really like his sculpting style. Um, like, I, I, he also has that uh, Insomnia brand, and I'm not always the biggest fan of those ones, just because it's not, like, my cup of tea. There's a few that I like, but they're, like, the more tame ones. Um, but I'm pretty much all of his, like, core line stuff I'm a fan of. Uh, I think the only exception is, like, the, the Wizard of Oz stuff is a little hit or miss for me. But pretty much any of his busts, I think, are really cool. The bath relay. Oh, the oh, the, uh, yeah, the um. Right, it comes from insomnia. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, I don't care for that either. A lot of the KDM figures have started doing that for like the larger scale stuff and it's always very annoying because, I don't know, let me decide where the figure is looking, please. At least it's like an easy, a relatively straightforward thing to like patch if you don't want it. You just stick some buddy in there and you call it good. <laughs> Let's get Where are you at, my little friend? Where are you at? Hey, Steve T, thank you for the follow and thank for the read. I can read. Thank you for the follow. Hey, Jelly Gato. I'll wait for you guys to get past the ad wall. If there is one, I don't know. Hey, I'm doing well. How are you doing? What were you guys doing on stream today? Or you all? Y'all. Yeah, I, so I just started playing the game because I got the core set, uh, so I've just done the epilogue and painted the, uh, uh, I, I did that after I finished painting the survivors and the, um, white line. Uh, but yeah, I guess I should do rigmarole. So we're painting, we're painting Kingdom Death Core. We got three, three monsters left. Um, uh, we got the Watcher, we got the Gold Smoke Knight, and we got the Phoenix. Uh, but I paint other stuff too. Uh, Let's grab a few things real quickly. Yeah. Grab, I'll grab my three most recent big projects. Um, so like I said, I paint Kingdom Death, so we painted up Winter Solstice Lucy at the end of last year. Hey, Adam Stevens, how are you? Um, a Minic. Year four check-in model, awesome, cool. I'll, I'll have to figure out what I wanna do for my uh, check-in model come April. Um, yes, I have to do my elevator pitch. Um, this is, uh, uh, Octavius from Black Crow. He was, I painted him up like Santa. Uh, he got his little list. He's checking it twice. Uh, he was a Christmas mini. And then, uh, yeah, so I paint, I paint board game minis, bust, display minis, big, big, 
big minis that don't fit on camera. I'm gonna have to do that. Uh, trying to always like mess around with, and she's a little dusty. I should clean that. Um, but uh, yeah, it's always trying to try to do new things and all that stuff. Also, here, we'll, we'll, we haven't busted this guy out in a while. We have our, our little friend. Little friend. Speaking of Kingdom Death, we got the, uh, the blushing owl. My little buddy, who I still haven't glued in. I should glue him in at some point. Okay. Yeah. So, if you, if you have any projects that you're working on and want to share them in chat, Feel free to do so. I don't have any sort of crazy moderation. Um, yeah. I, I was lucky enough to grab the owl in the sale along with like uh, all the expansions that I cared about. Um, so we'll have expansions to paint throughout the year as well while we wait for the game brush chest, which is never gonna come. Yes, the owl is a resin monster that was released last summer uh he'll maybe be in some sort of future content um, but he's the blushing owl from kingdom death yeah i'll, I'll keep an eye out for those shots uh keegan thanks for stopping by as always and have a nice evening and enjoy your your hopefully comfy new chair I, so yeah, I got into mini painting about uh, this, by this April will be about three years. Um, I've done like other art things before that, like drawing and photography and uh, that kind of stuff. I never really did like painting, painting. I painted some like uh, car models and plane models as a kid, but that was basically like take testers enamel out of the, directly out of pot and put it on the Ferrari and make it sad looking. Kind of thing. Hey, right, no worries, Steep Tea. Thanks again for the raid. Um, yeah, so I mean, I have, here is my, my first little mini. I got into mini painting because of DMD. Um, so I painted up my, uh, my little uh, life cleric uh, for our uh, Horde of the Dragon Queen campaign. who had to be the dad of the group because everyone decided to pick pick weird races and we had to keep like infiltrating of all human cult so I had to go do all the things and make sure no one would die because I was also the cleric and then also be a the the break open the uh, can of ass whooping or whatever because I was also the only caster <laughs> Good times. Well, like they were like bird people. So there was a there was a ranger. There was a bard, and there was so the party comp. Yeah, the party composition was ranger, which they're a half caster if you even if even that uh, in five e. Uh, barbarian, a uh, yeah bard, who was played by a person who. I didn't really know what was going on all the time, so yeah. And then, uh, is that it? Were there only four people at the table? Oh, there was a monk. Monk. Yeah. So I, I picked Cleric, not knowing, because it was my first time playing 5e, uh, that it was the best class in the game, bar none. I will, I will. You can feel free to argue, but. You will be wrong. Yeah. I don't, I don't know about always. Um, 
fifth edition it definitely is. Uh, Pathfinder 1, it's pretty, pretty baller. Um, Pathfinder 2, it's not quite as good. The best class in Path, or the, the most OP, uh, <laughs> class combo in Pathfinder 2 is apparently Human Fighter. Because as a human, you can take an extra class feat, and you can also have, like, uh, your ancestry open to others so you can get like this gnomish ancestry that lets you dual wield these mace weapons that have reach or whatever and then you're unstoppable but anyways yeah yeah cleric is just a fun class i think everyone everyone likes to poo poo on it in the olden days because oh it's the healer whatever but Our, our current campaign that's been going on for three years, I'm a wizard this time. Uh, and I do miss being a cleric. And I always joke about having my wizard die so I can be a cleric again. Because <laughs> we, we don't have a cleric. Our, our healer is our paladin and our bard a little bit. Um, so that, that has led to a few hairy moments and encounters. Exactly, yeah. Or yeah, a healing word. All that good stuff. Let's get a little bit more of that sienna out. Yeah, or, or, they're, or they're laughing and poo-pooing on you until you uh, bust up the spirit guardians and the uh, spiritual weapon and then you're just killing everyone on the battlefield because it's great. Am I serious? How are you doing? Oh, it is already 10.23. I'll, I'll paint for a little while longer since we did get a raid. And pray to God that we don't get another raid because I would like to go to bed a little bit earlier than I have been the last couple days. I tried to go to bed early. I think it's today, Monday. No, today is Tuesday, thank God. Okay. <laughs> Uh, I was like, I know I had two work days this week already. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I was watching Ezra, uh, who's in dog, and he, uh, Monday night kept me up very late because he decided to be a worm and play with Poe and worm around. <laughs> Nice. Yeah, Artificer is a really cool class too. Um, one of the first games that I DM'd, I did the um, the Sunless Citadel, and the guy who normally DMs our group uh, uh, was the player in this one, and he chose Artificer because I think at the time it was still a playtest class. I don't think it was official yet, and I was like, yeah, do whatever you want. It was a lot of fun. It was really cool. A lot of cool niche abilities. I also learned the valuable lesson of don't tell players to do whatever you want, because then you'll get some min maxer coming, you come in who's like, oh, I'm going to be a sore locket in, and then I'm going to showboat and make it not fun for other people. Tell. Oh, it is? Yeah. It was late. It was like after midnight. <laughs> but he he was very active on his final night. He was a silly boy. See, like. Like, Fighter Paladin, I'm like, okay, yeah, that, that's like a subclass that, like, makes sense, like, in-world pretty easily. Like, yeah, it's fine. I don't, I'm not a fan of, like, the Sword Locket in BS, because it's like, okay, so you, you, 
were born a sorcerer, and then he decided to be a paladin, and then, oh wait, that wasn't enough, he made a, a warlock pact, or patron pact, or whatever. Yeah, I guess to clarify, so Sor Lockadin is a sorcerer, warlock, paladin. And it lets you do crazy meta magic things and you get your smite slots back on short rest and yada 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 yada. It's very cool and very broken. And like, that's fine. But like the guy, this was like a new guy in the group because I was uh, DMing both to learn how to DM and also like give some new people a chance to play because we haven't had played before. And like his friend helped him make this broken class, who was also in the group. And every time he like would smite or something, he just got a showboat and it's like, eh. so one, one, yeah, basically. Uh, so, in the, the second campaign that we played, because I did two, two, like, short adventures with this group, um, one of them was the Summit Citadel, and then the other one was a mission, a higher level thing from the Ghosts of Saltmarsh, just to give people a chance to try higher level characters and see if they still like the game. And that's what I call the showboating was. Um, but he technically got like the final hit on the boss. But I was like, oh no, he's still up. And then uh, my friend who's the DM, uh, Bob, who comes into chat sometimes, got a hit on the bad guy on the next round. So I gave him the kill because he deserved it. And that's why you use a DM screen. So you can cheese things to make the game better for more players. Well, yeah, I mean, it's Bob. <laughs> he, he has the DM for me for like forever and ever. Yeah, I mean, I don't cheat as a player. I'm the, I'm the guy who like goes through the rules and is like, oh, well, no, we can't actually do this. Or I go pull up Crawford's uh, Twitter to see if he's fucking tweeted something that changes the rules or whatever. Thanks for stopping by. It was nice to meet you and chat. Have a nice rest of your evening or day. I don't know where you are, so I will say both. Yeah, I will, uh, it's 10.30, I'll give it, we'll go for five more minutes. <laughs> Get some of these all DVD details. to clarify for the folks at home and I was kidding she likes to just say cheater and stuff like that especially when I paint stuff like this <laughs> this stupid fucking bust which also has the sculpted irises that we were talking about earlier
Yeah, I don't know why the KDM sculptor has decided to do that on a lot of their larger minis. I don't care for it. Were old marble statues sculpted like that? Because I, I remember, like, uh, apparently, like, Poots likes to think of them more like statues rather than, like, and, like, paint them up like stone rather than paint them up all colorfully. So I wonder if that's why they do it. So that it still has, like, eyes if it's just a sculpture. I don't know. Oh, nice. Yeah, I've seen a couple of people use those online. Um, they're like, talk about them on the Discord and stuff like that. Um, you have to let me know how it goes. Um, I, I was very happy with how my uh, blue stuff molds went. Which, if people are not familiar with what blue stuff is, I can grab it and show you real quickly. Hey, Diana, why are you awake? Go to bed. Go to bed. Get out of here. No, I'm kidding. How was your day? It seemed like you had a very eventful day. You are what? Yeah, I'll just grab the blue stuff just for... This is my, my bag of uh, uh, face bark. Um... Uh, so it worked really well for me. So I got, I bought, so there's the stone faces that come in core, but there's also that stone face base um, pack that gives you a little bit more variety. Um, so what blue stuff is, is a thermoplastic, which means it's a plastic that responds to heat or temperature. In this case, you heat it up in warm water and it becomes all gooey. Uh, and then you can make molds out of it. 
that have like a relatively limited time use. Um, like it'll, it'll start to deform relatively over time. Um, so yeah, basically what I would do is heat up the bars, uh, roll it out flat, and then squish face bases into it. Uh, it took a couple of times to get like good. Yeah. Oh, I, if you look closely, you can see there's little inverse faces in there. So, um, so what I did then is I just pressed Milliput into them, and voila, you get face bases that I can break apart and put on my bases. Yeah, I mean, that's what Kingdom Death is, baby. Trauma. Hey. Hey. So, uh, does this have any on it? Yeah. So, this is the washer's base, the guy we're working on right now. Um, so, I use those little middle putt bases, our little middle putt bases, and put them on the base, sand them flush, and bada bing, bada boom. Uh, I like this much better than like the GW crackle plates, uh, just because the GW crackle plates are way too thick to put on the things directly so I need to sand them down forever. It's a pain, but yeah. His base is kind of boring, but it's fine because I needed to leave it flat because of his uh, little doodickies. His little weeble deals. Which, speaking of, this should also be black, so let's get some color on it, and then just in time for Diana to get here, we'll probably call it a night. Because I have to wake up at 5.30, because I'm taking a class in East Coast time. It starts at 9. Yeah, I, 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 I much prefer, like, like, I'm just saying his base is a little bit boring compared to the other ones that have, like, more stuff going on, but, like, I'm, I'm very happy with this basing scheme, where, like, it's the faces and messed up ground and stuff, and the big boys, um, that's rough, buddy. So, wait, why are you awake? It's... It's, 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 it's 140. You got four hours to go. Go to bed. Say that like it's an explanation. E, e for days off. Are you going to Japan or something? Social security number. what you meant. I was like, what the hell? Why are you talking about social security numbers? Got it. Well, 
let's see. I got my tax documents from Twitch today for all $100 or whatever I made. <laughs> Woohoo! Silly. Well, you're in the UK, right, Semi-Serious? In which case you guys do not have social security numbers. I don't think, right? You have something else? I mean, I don't think you would have social security numbers because you don't have social security in the UK. That's a American thing that's gonna be gone by the time I could use it, probably. Oh, okay. I don't know what I'm thinking then. Who's... I'm mixing up where everyone is. It's hard to keep track. Oh, so we... Did you just move somewhere else in the, the Big Apple, or did you move further away yet? Hey, Brooklyn Rob, speaking of the Big Apple. Hey. Hey. Oh, you're in Seattle? Okay, then I guess it's fine for you to be awake. You could've just, could've just left with that. Although I guess you said you have to wake up at 5.30 Eastern, so I rescind that it's okay. The front arm, I have it here for context for other people. We go to the KDM drawer. It is. And yay. Uh, this is the Nightmare Ram. Yeah, I haven't put him together yet. Uh, but he, he got he got the biggest the biggest the biggest peach in all of KDM. Um, but he's got, here's his face-ish, sort of, kind of, it's a face on top of the face kind of thing, it's very odd. Love it. So his front hands are holding a lantern, right? I think that's how it works. So are you happy to be be rid of your roommate, Diana? Uh, he holds a lantern, I believe. Uh, oh, if you if you thought by peach, I meant he has an actual peach. Uh, no, he has a big old booty. He got a whole lot of junk 
in that trunk. Also, whoops, it's way past the five minutes I said I would paint for. This is what always happens. No one is surprised. Yeah, not wet nurse. Instead of having a session. I mean, you can make him like the blushing ram. <laughs> Have him hang out with the, the blushing owl. theft, which is the most common form of theft in America, and it's very rarely persecuted. Yay. Also, did you guys see that Tesla had to do a recall, or they were forced to do a recall because they, the self-driver mode in their car had like three like behavior settings. And they're like, uh, the, the, um, everything but the, the, there was like chill, normal and aggressive or whatever. And normal and aggressive both had rolling stops and like hogging the, the, the passing lane programmed into them. It's like, what? Uh, who thought that was a good idea? And B, who would trust anyone? Or who, like, what kind of person would continue trusting the company who would program BS like that into their fucking cars? I don't know. Yeah. But if you're not familiar with the rolling stop, it is. Uh, in case uh, you're not familiar with that lingo or whatever. It's basically when you, you get to a stop sign, but you don't actually stop, you just keep going through it. But like you, you slow down a little bit and then keep going, basically. Which is very much illegal. <laughs> And like it was going like, it would only slow down to like six miles an hour or something, which is not, not very slow for a place where you're supposed to be zero miles an hour. <laughs> okay. He's getting there. He's got some colors, some values. I'm definitely going to be doing like a lot of blending on him to smooth him out a bit. I'm probably punch some things back up, but a good start at least. Basically, once we finish up the robes, we have his little scarf, his face scarf, all the lanterns and the blue streaks. So hopefully, it shouldn't take too too long. I should definitely be able to, I think I can finish him on Thursday during Critical Role. Um, and then I can move on to the Phoenix. So, but we will stop there for today so I can go sleep again. Yeah. He's a very cool mini. Um, yeah, I'll stop there today. Thank you all for tuning in. Thank you again uh, to Steep Tea and everyone who came over in the raid and followed and all that good stuff. Um, I'm just going to end rather than go raid so I can just go to bed and not have to stick around and say hi and all that stuff. I'm going to be antisocial. So, see you guys. I'll probably stream on 
Friday, unless something happens. Uh, worst case, I'll stream on Sunday. So, thanks again. Bye. If I can find the ending thing, there it is. Bye. <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. you.